Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, welcome to the Community Presbyterian Church of Ben Avon, all of you here in the sanctuary and all of you joining us on our live stream. Uh, there are many announcements in the bulletin today. I'm just going to highlight a couple. Um, the Salvation Army tree is out in the narthex, um, and it, there are four tags remaining. I looked before I came in. Um, so this gives us the opportunity to buy gifts for the Salvation Army Children's Christmas Program. So please, if you haven't already picked up a tag, there's four left, so we need to get those four children gifts. Um, and they will be collected on the 4th of December. Um, there's a Christmas calendar on the back of your bulletin. Um, I encourage you to look that over. There's a lot of stuff going on this Christmas season, and we'd like for all of you to attend. Um, and put this on your refrigerator, because that's what I already did. Um, today is Deck the Halls. Um, so everyone after church, you're welcome to go out and, de and um, decorate the Christmas tree. Um, there's going to be a cake for new members and other refreshments. And now the choir is going to help us deck the halls. <laughs> I trust that you have heard the news. I have accepted a call to serve as a faculty member and the director of the Doctor of Ministry program at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. Therefore, um, I will need to be leaving this church that I have served and loved for nearly 10 years. It was one of the most difficult decisions that I've ever had to make. If you know the story of Jacob in the Bible, wrestling with God, wrestling all night long, and Jacob was finally blessed by God, but he left limping. So if you see me limping the next couple weeks, you'll know why. So I will lead you through Advent and celebrate Christmas together. And my last Sunday will be Sunday, January the 8th, Epiphany Sunday. Friends, thank you for the honor of serving as your pastor. It has been one of the greatest blessings of my life. I love you all, and I will remember you always. But as your pastor still, I must remind you that you are a strong and healthy church, and that God will lead you on to do good and faithful ministry. That will be my ongoing prayer for you. And now Mary Jo Buffo from the Personnel Committee has one more announcement. Change is difficult. And given the choice, most of us would choose to keep things just as they are. It's just easier that way. In the coming year, as we transition to a new pastor, and we are confronted with change. The session will be working closely with the Commission on Ministry of the Pittsburgh Presbytery and the process they have in place to find a new pastor. CBCBA is a healthy church with dedicated leadership and competent staff. Our members are faithful to our vision and mission and there is no reason to believe that we will not continue to move forward as the vital church we are with a new pastor leading us. It is important for us to trust the process and the, that the Presbytery will initiate with the session and continue to guide them through as we discern who our next pastor will be. Prayer will be our welcome companion during this time of transition. So, as we keep on moving forward, let our minds be calm and our faith steady 
as Jesus will surely be with us, just as he promised when he said, Remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Let us now join in the responsive call to worship. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change. Be still and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Together, and God meets us here just as we are, inviting us to the font where we remember that this is the place where we can receive the grace that we need. So friends, let us confess our sin now before God and one another. Let us pray. Generous God, you give beyond measure, bringing forth abundance day by day. We confess our failure to acknowledge your goodness. We confuse our efforts with your providence. We conflate our deeds with your gifts. Lord, have mercy. Grow in us thankful hearts, ready to praise your faithfulness. Form in us grateful spirits, quick to trust in your gracious care. Inspire in us thanksgiving in our words and deeds through Jesus Christ, our Savior.
Amen. Friends, the mercy of our God is from everlasting to everlasting. It never runs out. It never quits. There is enough for you and for me and for all who believe. So friends, believe this, the good news of the gospel. In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now you may be seated, and I'd like to invite the children to come on down the time with the children. baptism. Now we're having Thanksgiving on Thursday, right? And so this is a special thing to give thanks for. So in baptism, there's a lot of things it means, but here's the most important thing it means, is that God says to the person we're baptizing, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you. That's what God says in baptism. And I love you too. So friends, I'd like you to watch closely because we're baptizing somebody who sits right among us. Ava. Ava. So if you guys can come over here so you can get a bird's eye view, it'd be great. And you guys can have a seat so you can watch and not miss a thing. Okay, and we have Elder Mary Whittle presenting a new member, Robin Schellenberger. On behalf of the session, I joyfully present this new member who has been received into the membership of the congregation by reaffirmation of faith, Robin Schellenberger. So Robin, I have three questions for you. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? And do you turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? Wonderful. <laughs> I will and I do. So, friends, hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority on earth and in heaven has been given to me. So go baptize those in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. And so, obeying what Jesus told us, confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. So let us remember with joy our own baptism, as we celebrate the sacrament. On behalf of the <laughs> session, I present Ava Schellenberger, child of Robin and Daniel Schellenberger, to receive the sacrament of baptism. So Robin, do you desire that Ava be baptized, do you? And relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and teach that faith to your child, do you? And Ava, I have a question for you. Do you want to be baptized? Yes. All right, so then I have a question for the whole congregation out there watching. Do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Ava by word and deed with love and prayer? Do we? we do. <clears throat> and will you encourage her to know and follow Christ and be a faithful member of his church? Will we? We will. And a special question for the kids. So you already know Ava, right? Will you help her find her way to Sunday school? Yes. yes? And will you share, share the stories of Jesus with her? Yes. And maybe even share your snack? Yes? yes? <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> so then with the whole church, let us stand and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> and the words are up there. Do 
you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Ava, you want to help me pour the water in? Yeah? Okay. And I made it nice and warm for you, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so I'm going to say a little prayer of the water, and then we can, we're going to do this thing, okay? All right, let's pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized and anointed with your spirit. And by the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. So we thank you, God, for the water of baptism. And we pray that you would send your spirit now to move over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth, a Jesus fountain. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it, raise them to, nut, to new life, and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Ava, that she may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. Amen. All right, Ava, you ready? All right. A little closer. Ava. Ray, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Ava, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. All right, so Ava asked if I not carry her. <laughs> but she did say she would go for a little walk with me, right, Ava? Okay, so let's go this way first. This is Ava. And Ava, these are all your friends. You already know most of them, right? Yeah. And since you're a little older and you're not a baby anymore, you might remember this day. But if you don't, don't worry, because we're going to remind you what it means when we say you're baptized is that God loves you on good days and even on days when you're a little sad. This is where you can come amongst your friends that are going to go to Sunday school with you and are going to remind you how much God loves you and that this is a place you can come to remember that all the days of your life when you're little like this and when you're big like me. This is still the place that we come to remind us how much God loves us. All right? <laughs> All right. So let's go back. We'll have one more prayer. And then you can go downstairs to Sunday school, too, if you want. Yay. All right. Come over here. And I'm going to ask the kids to lift up your hands like we're going to say a prayer. We're going to say one more prayer for Ava. All right? All right. So hands up high, clap them together, bring them up over your heads, close your eyes, open your mouths, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for baptism. Help Ava remember she is your child, now and always. Amen. So it is a joy to welcome new member to our church today, and I am pleased to have the honor of introducing Robin Schellenberger to you. Robin is a familiar face, as she has been attending here for some time now, along with her husband Dan and Ava, who you see up here every week for the children's sermon. Robin is retired from Passive End Hospital Laboratory, but remains very busy, particularly with an elementary student school, school student at home. 
While she doesn't have quite as much time to indulge in her hobbies now, she has enjoyed quilting, sewing, cross-stitching, and even cooking from scratch and canning her own vegetables. Robin has lived in various cities in the, across the United States, but Ben Avon is home to her. Robin previously attended Emsworth Presbyterian Church, and she had served as a deacon there. So when asked what brought her to CPCBA, Robin gave a one-word response, Ava. <laughs> we welcome Robin and are so glad to have her and her family here. Please join me in the welcome. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the fellowship and ministry of our family of faith. reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory. 
In Ephesians chapter 1, Paul writes, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and domination, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Speak, Lord, speak a word. Speak a word of truth. Speak a word of power. Speak a word that lasts. Speak, Lord, for your people are listening. Amen. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. The beginning of the book of Genesis and the Gospel of John have dynamic words to start. In the beginning, throughout the Bible, beginnings are important. In contrast, endings are overlooked sometimes and even underestimated, but endings are just as significant as beginnings. Here are some endings to some classic books. See if you can guess what they are. From the land of Oz, said Dorothy gravely, and here is Toto too, and oh, Aunt Em, I'm so glad to be at home again. Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Frank Baum. It is not often that someone comes along who is a true friend and a good writer. Charlotte was both. Charlotte's Web, E.B. White. And so as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. (laughs) A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens. You guys are good. I should have had more. Americans, on average, hear or read 10,000 words a day. Think about all the phone calls and texts and emails that we casually exchange without really paying much attention. And that's not even counting the number of news alerts that we read on our phones. Words, words, words. Most of them go in one ear and out the other. But there are some words that are worth remembering. Of lasting significance are the words that someone speaks at the end of their life, before they die. The last words of Arthur Conan Doyle, author of Sherlock Holmes's stories, were to his wife, you are wonderful. The last words of Harriet Tubman, conductor of the Underground Railroad, were, swing low, sweet chariot. The last words of John Wesley, founder of Methodism, were, best of all, God is with us. The words that people speak or write at the end of their life are often what stay in our memories long after they have gone. Good or bad, they're the words that last. 
Well, today is the last day of the Christian liturgical year. We call it Christ the King Sunday. It began in 1925, while the world was still reeling from World War I, and the dictators were getting ready to begin to launch World War II. And the sense of secularism was pervading the world and was suppressing the presence and influence of religion, especially Christianity. And so the church made a bold statement and saying that today we proclaim that you can do what you want, but Jesus Christ will have the last word. So today in our gospel lesson, we find Jesus hanging on a cross between two thieves. The first thief wasted his final words in mocking Jesus saying, if you are the Messiah, then save yourself and us. The other thief used his final words well in cutting off the mockery and instead saying, speaking the truth about Jesus, saying, this man has done nothing wrong. And then humbly begging for mercy, Jesus Remember me when you come into your kingdom. In the Gospel of Luke, the final words that Jesus speaks to God are, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But before that, the final words that he speaks to this repentant thief are these. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The final words that Jesus speaks are words of grace and mercy and love and the promise of eternal life. Words that last. In fact, these words lasted throughout the bloody crucifixion and death and the glorious resurrection. These words lasted through the disciples telling the good news of the gospel near and far. These words lasted with the apostles writing letters to the churches. Part of the one we read today from Ephesians, where Paul said, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. These words have lasted throughout the centuries and have stood the test of time so that we can hear them today. Words of God's power and dominion and promise of eternal life. Words that last. So in these powerful last words of Jesus, truly I tell you, today you'll be with me in paradise. I think there's a small word that is often overlooked and perhaps underestimated in its importance. And it's simply this, today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but today. As Christian disciples, we don't live looking back with regret, and we don't live looking forward with worry, but we live in the present moment giving thanks for the gift of this day, saying that God is here and now. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, right here, right now. Christ's place in the kingdom of heaven for all eternity demands our attention here and now. For on this day we proclaim to the world that Christ is king over all of creation. Christ is the ruler over our lives. And Christ will have the last word. And it is a word of promise of eternal life in paradise and abiding presence in this life. So what does that matter to us today? 
Well, when you are waiting anxiously in the doctor's office for test results, remember Jesus' words, Today you will be with me. When we are weeping over the grave of a loved one, remember Jesus' words, Today you will be with me. When you receive a letter from your pastor saying that she's leaving this beloved church, Remember Jesus' words, today you will be with me. When our hearts are troubled, when hope seems lost, when we can't imagine a way forward, remember Jesus' words, today you will be with me. I remember the day that I went to visit a woman in a nursing home. And she shared with me that she had just received word that her daughter had died. Words that no parent should ever have to hear. So through tears, she told me about her daughter and her life. I listened and then read scripture and prayed with her and reminded her of the promises of our faith. And then as she walked me to the door to say goodbye, her final words were not words of grief or sorrow or even anger. They were words of thanks. She said, thank you for being here and thank you for your ministry. For me, I heard them as thank you that in the midst of this day of death, that you reminded me of life, that Jesus said, today you will be with me today, tomorrow, and always. So in this, these lasting words that Paul wrote about God's power and dominion, there's another important little word that is easy to overlook in all of Paul's big words. <laughs> the word that Lindsay read at the very beginning, I do not cease to give thanks. Our spiritual word for the day from Meister Eckhart is simply this. If the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. So friends, as you gather this Thursday for Thanksgiving with friends and family around the table, let us remember to give thanks for all of our many blessings, not the least of which is the gift that Jesus gives the promise of everlasting life in paradise and abiding presence in this life. So of all the words that we read in scripture today and that I spoke in my sermon, what are the most important words? What is the takeaway for today? Remember Jesus' words, today you will be with me in paradise. And, Jesus, in Paul's words, do not cease to give thanks. Today, give thanks. Simple words. Powerful words. Words that last. May it be so. Give thanks to the heart.
Jesus, you are the everlasting ruler of glory. You are the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And we pray that your kingdom will reign forever in our hearts and in this world. Lord, we pray for your kingdom to come here and now, bringing a kingdom of justice, righteousness, hope, love, peace, mercy, and grace for all. Lord, we ask that you rule in our hearts, lead in this world, and govern over your worldly kingdom and heavenly kingdom. But Lord, honestly, we often have our own plans and agendas. We want to be rulers of our own world. Forgive us for those times. Help us to know how to live as your kingdom people in these times. Help us to spread the good news of the different kind of king that you are. Lord, thank you for being a different kind of king. Thank you for your goodness and kindness in our lives. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your kingdom that is unlike any in this world. We bring before God now the deepest cares of our heart and the concerns of this world. We pray in joy and with deep thanksgiving. And we also pray in need and from deep despair. When we are in trouble, O oh Lord, we cry out for our, your strength. We pray for those who are worried about jobs or finances, for those who are struggling with school or learning, those who might be weighed down. Sustain us, God, to find patience and possibility in each day. When we are in pain, O oh Lord, we cry out for your comfort. We pray for those struggling with health, for those whom this day is just another to be endured. Soothe us, God, to find calm in the midst of uncertainty and to know your peace. When we are lost, O oh Lord, we cry out for your guidance. We pray for those who are facing difficult decisions and unwelcome choices, for those who cannot find hope in their future and those struggling. Lead us, God, to follow your teachings and to share your love with those all around us. We trust you, Lord, and offer you our thanks, for you are our God, and we are your people. Loving God, hear us as we bow down in worship. Hear us as we pray for those on our prayer list and those in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, Lord, as we pray those words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> And now to the one who has blessed us so, so abundantly, let us return our thanks. Let us worship God with our gifts and our offerings.
having given these gifts, let us dedicate them to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, from whom all blessings flow, out of our deep gratitude, we offer these gifts to you. By your Holy Spirit, bless them, we pray, so that through them we might share your blessings and change the world for good, one person at a time. In the name of and for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. bless you and keep you. May God be kind and gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>